It's time for phase three of the Cowboys offseason program, the first organized team activity of the Mike McCarthy era, next on The Blitz. Welcome to the Blitz, your Dallas Cowboys report from inside the star in Frisco. Bill Jones along with Kyle Yeomans. And this is the surest sign of all that there's a return of some sense of normalcy around here. It's the start of OTAs. It is phase three of the NFL's offseason programs. And it really is the first organized team activity of the Mike McCarthy era. Because, of course, we didn't have OTAs last year. But it's a great opportunity for the whole team to really get focused on what's going to happen in 2021. It, it kind of took me aback a little bit when you said that to open the show. I was like, wait, really? It's only been, you know, a year and a half since he's been hired. But it was finally an opportunity to get these guys in the facility and really put things to work. They got a chance to do that in training camp last year, but it took all the way up until that point to finally see that. And they have six OTAs down from 10, but I look at this as being the seventh OTA. This is the first o OTA. The Blitz is the first <laughs> organized team activity here uh, of the phase three <laughs> of the offseason. For a while now, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, a, a phase three there of the offseason program. Go. All right, let's go back, though, to phase two, and that would be the rookie mini camp, which uh, was last weekend. And uh, what were your impressions of these rookies who came in here starry eyed for the first time coming into the star. Well, if OTAs are the appetizer that you get at the table, the, the bread is what uh, the free bread you pick on. That was what rookie minicamp was. It was just a little taste of what this Cowboys team is going to look like in 2021. And it's pretty exciting because of all the improvements that you seemingly had on the defensive side of the football with your first round pick Michael Parsons with Kelvin Joseph with guys in the secondary that you kind of work through uh, throughout. It, it really is something to look out for because not only are the rookies getting their first taste, but so are the coaching staff. Yeah, we got to see some of those rookies actually making plays and obviously the emphasis on this defensive side of the football in the draft and the coaches get them in here and takeaways, takeaways. We need more takeaways. How about number 11, though? How about Micah Parsons? He certainly looks good in that uh, Penn State number 11 uh, for the Cowboys and they inserted him right in the middle of the, of the defense. Yeah, it looks like he's used to wearing the Navy in white, right? And, and uh, of course, all eyes are going to be on him because he was selected at the 12th overall pick. And the, the biggest question going into rookie mining camp is where will he be utilized? Where is he going to play in the middle of Dan Quinn's system? And the answer, I think, from mini camp is a little bit of everywhere. I mean, they put him at the will. They put him at the Mike linebacker. They worked him inside. They worked him outside. They worked him as a pass rusher as well. It looked like he took maybe a day to get his feet underneath him a little bit. Of course, he opted out of the 2020 collegiate season. So, I think overall, Micah Parsons then finally got his feet underneath him, got that conditioning back, and that's going to bode well for him if he's especially going to play roles like he did at minicamp. I think he looked kind of natural right there with the football in his hand. <laughs> takeaways, takeaways, well. takeaways. All right, one guy who said uh, when he was drafted by the Cowboys in the sixth round, Izzy Mukwamu out of South Carolina, played cornerback at South Carolina. He said he's going to be the best cornerback that uh, you have on the, the in this class or on this team. Well, he's going to play safety play instead. Safety. Yeah, you're exactly right. And, of course, these are huge reps for corners switching to safety. And Reggie Robinson last year didn't get these reps. Byron Jones a couple years ago when he made that switch coming out of UConn, he got some of those reps. So these are very important for guys like Mukwamu who are making that position change. And based off of the track record of corners switching to safety in a Cowboys uniform, it's going to take a little bit of time, but he looked fluid, looked good with his footwork, and I think overall Mukwamu will fit in at that safety spot, play a little bit of the free next to Donovan Wilson, but I think this is going to be a fun switch, and a guy you can cheer for, he's been putting in that extra work, getting extra reps, and trying to find a way to find a role here on this Cowboys roster. All right, so we're just getting started on this edition of The Blitz. Coming up, we will be hearing from Cowboys rookies, and Nick Eatman will join the show, and we'll take a look at the Cowboys offensive line the interior of that line when we come back. The Dallas Cowboys Blitz is brought to you by AT&T, the official 5G innovation partner of the Dallas Cowboys. And by the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. Tour AT&T Stadium, the home of the Dallas Cowboys. Tours are available daily. 
For details, visit attstadium.com slash tours. This segment is brought to you by AT&T, the official 5G innovation partner of the Dallas Cowboys. The Blitz continues now from here at the Star in Frisco. Bill Jones now joined by Nick Eatman of DallasCowboys.com. We've spent a lot of this offseason, and the Cowboys used a lot of their inventory as far as scouting goes and everything in the draft, looking at needs like on defense. Okay, we figured out that maybe things are going to be okay. On the offensive line, as far as the tackles are concerned, they appear to be healthy now. Zach Martin is back after missing the last six games of last year. But, Nick, my question for you is there wasn't a lot of resources put into the interior offensive line, and you look at the depth chart, the interior offensive line. Let's start at the center position. Tyler Biotish, when they line up for OTAs this week, there's no question Tyler Biotish is in there as a starting center because there's not very much else there. Right. He, you're right about that. He's going to be the center. Um, but how does he perform? I mean, that's the big question there. And, and I think that, you know, the, the Cowboys will, will be looking at that um, – and, and see kind of the guys that are behind him. Like you said, Bill, there's not a lot of guys behind him. But, but you know, last year, Biotish is a fifth-round pick. He played some there in the middle of the season. Then he got hurt and kind of a weird pregame injury. You know, you, you, usually your center doesn't hurt his hamstring in the middle of pregame warm-ups. Then he didn't really get back in the action again. And I think that's the part that's a little bit concerning is why he didn't get back in there. What does he have to work on? But, you know, like you said before, if there was a really big concern, they would have probably addressed it more. I think this team is, is looking at, at it's his job to lose right now, Tyler Biotish at center. Okay. And, of course, Joe Looney sitting out there as a free agent hasn't been uh, re-signed by the Cowboys or signed by any other team. This, as far as Biotish is concerned, this is what they envisioned in the draft a year ago when they traded up to take him late in the fourth round, that he would be uh, sooner rather than later the starting center for this team, right? Exactly. You know, they, 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 they had a vision for that. He got his, himself in there a little bit. And, and like I said before, I think if they, if they had a lot of concern that he couldn't do the job, he did enough in the, uh, the season last year. I think the one thing that, that kept him from getting back into the lineup at the end was the shotgun snaps. You know, coming from Wisconsin, that wasn't a, a, an area that they did a lot of shotgun snaps. And so that was a little bit erratic here and there. I know Andy Dalton had some issues with that. And, and uh, with, with his snaps, they wanted it to be a little bit more consistent. So I would imagine that is the number one thing that he's working on this year. Uh, on top of just the, the strength, we always see from season one to season two, players get physically stronger and better. He, he could stand to do that as well. He gets those shotguns down at perfectly. Plus, plus he's got a different guy back there catching it, a little bit better athlete, obviously, in Dak Prescott. So I think that you know he has a chance to do that. But I'll be excited to see some of the guys behind him and see what kind of competition. Yeah, there. that's my next question for you. Okay, so uh, heaven forbid anything happens to Biotish, then who steps in at center, you think? Well, before it gets to he's the guy, I think they're going to look at, at uh, Connor McGovern as well. You know, O-lines, coaches will say it, you know, from back to the 50s to, to now, get your five best guys on the field. And I'm not sure McGovern won't be one of those th uh, top five. So you think there might be some, some real competition going so. on? I think I mean, I, I think yeah. that get those – Get those snaps right. Get, you know, make sure, be honest, get everything in, in, in check because if not, McGovern has done it in college. You got a seventh-round pick, My, Matt Farniak. He's done it in college as well. So um, th there, there'll be some competition there. And keep in mind, McGovern was a third-round draft pick out of right. Penn State. He was a, even a higher draft right. pick than right. Farniak. So, did, yeah, get your, oh, your five out there. Let's not rule out. I mean, it's been said that Connor Williams could also jump in there as well. Now, in a contract year, does Connor Williams really want to be that guy? I, I don't know. I don't think he wants to move to center. But, but you want to show some value there. Um, if, if it means getting your five best guys out there, it, it's a possibility. It, it, you know, along those lines, it might behoove Connor Williams to take some snaps at center yeah. because it is his contract year, and then you got versatility. He could play multiple positions on the offensive line. Well, that that's so valuable for anybody. That's the reason why the Cowboys are 
or seemingly pretty high on Matt Farniok, their seventh round pick. He played all five positions at Nebraska. And, and say what you want about that, that school, they've always put out good offensive linemen. So he started games at guard, both guard spots. He started some games at center and he's played both tackle positions as well. So he comes in here and, and those guys are so valuable as backups because if you're thinking, can we take eight guys to the game? Can we take nine linemen to the game? Well, you put a guy like Farniok, He's your eighth guy, but he is more of the, your ninth guy because he can play all of these positions. That's why there's valuable backups. So, forget what I said at the outset. Anybody could be the starting center for this uh, Cowboys team. Right now. There, you, know, there you go. All right, Nick, uh, we appreciate it. And up next here on The Blitz, Danny Sarek joins the show. We take a look at Kelvin Joseph wearing number 24. Pretty good number for at least one cornerback in Cowboys history, Everson Walls. This segment was brought to you by AT&T, the official 5G innovation partner of the Dallas Cowboys. The Blitz continues now. Bill Jones along with Kyle Yeomans as we take a look back at what was a very fine rookie mini camp last week. We got an actual chance to see these rookies firsthand. Danny Sarek was one of those who also got to talk to some of these rookies and Danny joins us now. Hello Danny. Hi Bill. The transition in the NFL can be quick and overwhelming not only learning new coaching styles and languages on the field but also uprooting and adjusting your personal life as well. That's why the Cowboys second round draft pick cornerback Kelvin Joseph says his main goal right now is to just stay focused. He says he's going the extra mile every time he steps out onto the field, not only to ensure he makes the team to support his family, but also so he's ready to make an immediate impact on this team. Joseph says his main goal throughout the rookie minicamp, as well as upcoming OTAs, is to take his game to the next level. Elevating, elevating my game, learning more, becoming a leader, building a foundation for myself so I can make a stamp in the game with my teammates and, and we can win this Super Bowl. I'm ready to face the challenge. I feel like I put put in all this work all my life just to get to this point. And, and I'm here surrounded by good coaches, and they're going to get me ready for to take this task at hand and be successful with it. Joseph, along with the rest of the rookie class, completed rookie minicamp last week, getting a taste of the NFL. Joseph says this rookie class has a lot of talent, and working alongside them motivates him to work hard. I got to hold myself to a standard, and they hold me to a standard. So. I'm just getting better every day and, and learning more every day so I can go out and perform the best I can. Joseph has the talent to earn a starting role and make a difference on this team. However, some have questioned his commitment. Joseph has a music career on the side and it had some wondering where his priorities lie. However, Joseph says there's nothing to worry about. Football is his focus. I just know my, my difference between my hobbies and my profession. Like, football is going to get me paid and it's going to change my family life. So making music is just like a hobby. So I'm not too much worried about it right now, but there will be some music coming one day. But right now, it's just strictly a business. Joseph says finally getting to see the facility, meet his teammates and coaches, has him feeling blessed and ready to get to work. As the Cowboys' second draft pick, it's clear cornerback was an area of need and the Cowboys feel confident in Joseph. However, when asked about the potential of becoming a starter as a rookie, Joseph chose to stay focused on the present. That would be a blessing, but right now I'm just working to get familiar with everything and master everything before I just step out on the field. One advantage Joseph and the rest of the rookies had that last year's rookie class didn't is that they actually get to be out on the field, whereas last year was all virtual. That hands-on experience benefits the players as well as the coaches, and Joseph says he's taking every advantage he can when he's out on that field. Bill? Yes, and uh, Kyle, what do you think the chances are Kelvin Joseph lines up the first game uh, <laughs> Thursday night at Tampa Bay as a starting cornerback? I think that's the expectation because this is the second straight year the Cowboys have selected a cornerback in the second round. Of course, they took Trayvon Diggs last year right around the same spot in the NFL draft, and I think Kelvin Joseph is expected to have a Trayvon Diggs-esque year. He is a ball hawk. He's very aggressive. He's got to bring that energy, I think, to the defense a little bit more than you would expect a Trayvon Diggs to. 
to, but in terms of the numbers, in terms of the starting time, I think you're going to see a lot of Kelvin Joseph, kind of like you saw a lot of Tra Trayvon Diggs as a rookie. And the coaches are finding out a lot about Kelvin Joseph as we speak, as the rookies are now working out with the veterans here at the Star in Frisco. Up next, which coordinator has the most pressure on him coming into 2021? Could it be Dan Quinn or might Kellen Moore be feeling some pressure? Welcome back to the Blitz, your Dallas Cowboys report. Bill Jones with Kyle Yeomans as OTAs get started this week here at the Star in Frisco. Let's take a look at that Dallas defense. Uh, no, do we have to look at it again <laughs> from last year? Here are the numbers from 2020. 31st in run defense, 14 games with 100 or more rushing yards allowed, the most points allowed in franchise history. 32nd in goal to go defense. I'm telling you, that's the last time we're going to look at that graphic. We're going to is throw that graphic away, okay? <laughs> because Dan Quinn is the new defensive coordinator of this team. So my question for you, Kyle Yeomans, is there more pressure on Dan Quinn to fix this defense or Kellen Moore on offense? That's a great question because I think the easy answer is Dan Quinn. There's a lot of pressure on Dan Quinn to come in and bring that Super Bowl caliber resume because he's had Super Bowl caliber defenses in the past. And plus the Cowboys have shown it's not necessarily out of the question to move on from a one year coordinator. Of course, they did so last year with Mike Nolan, but this defense isn't Super Bowl ready yet, or at least it doesn't look like that heading into the offseason. Dan Quinn's got a project on his hands and that's going to take multiple years. It's going to take a little bit of consistency to finally get his hands and maybe mold the clay that is this defense, especially with so many young pieces. However, the real answer is Kellen Moore, who has the most pressure on him because the expectations are exponentially higher. This is his third year as the offensive coordinator. His his offensive line, his quarterback should be healthy going into the season. He needs to have a top five caliber offense in the NFL, maybe even better than that because with all the investments, all the capital that has been spent on that side of the football, he has to find a way to be successful. Even if injuries happen again, I know you lost both of your offensive tackles last year. Even if you have some injuries like that happening again, Kellen Moore is the one that it, all the pressure and all of the weight falls on his shoulders because he has to find a way to be creative and make that offense successful. That's why I think he has more pressure than Dan Quinn specifically in 2021. So I think what you're saying then is if the Cowboys are going to win the NFC East and make a run in the playoffs, it's going to be on the offense carrying this team. Absolutely, because the offense, at least before Dak Prescott's injury and even before maybe some of the tackles had their injury issues in 2020, that was a top five offense in the NFL. They need to get back to that point if everybody's healthy. The defense defense doesn't have to be a top five defense. It needs to be a middle of the road defense to supplement what your offense has on that side of the football. I think if you have that marriage between the two, you're going to win the division. You might have a chance to make a bit of a run. And I think they're counting on so many guys, young guys on the defense. It's a defense that you hope will see improve as the season goes along. I mean, maybe playing its best football at the end of the year. So Kellen Moore, the pressure is on you, according to Kyle Yeomans. All right, when we come back here on the Blitz, it's almost Hall of Fame time. And check this out, Drew Pearson has chosen his presenter, a familiar name. The Dallas Cowboys Blitz was brought to you by AT&T, the official 5G innovation partner of the Dallas Cowboys. And by the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. Tour AT&T Stadium, the home of the Dallas Cowboys. Tours are available daily. For details, visit attstadium.com slash tours. Final couple of minutes of the Blitz. And really, Kyle, we are just two months away from the start of training camp. Nothing official from the Cowboys yet, but I'm going to optimistically say that the Cowboys are headed to Oxnard, California. Two months from today, basically. And then two weeks later, they'll be in Canton, Ohio for the Hall of Fame game on August 5th against Pittsburgh. On August 8th, 
Drew Pearson goes into the Hall of Fame and he made the announcement this week that his presenter at the Hall of Fame induction ceremony will be the great Roger Staubach. One more pass from Roger Staubach to the original 88 in Drew Pearson. Of course, the Hail Mary connection that they had will always live in NFL history and NFL lore for the rest of time. You can't tell the story of the NFL without these two. So it's even it's more fitting the fact that Staubach gets to give Drew Pearson that that final long awaited enshrinement into the Hall of Fame. And uh, it, he'll be, his induction will be the second day of the Hall of Fame ceremonies there. The 2021 class goes in. The 2020 class, which includes Jimmy Johnson and Cliff Harris, will be on Saturday. And two days prior to that, the Cowboys play the Steelers in the Hall of Fame game. And I'm telling you, Kyle, it's going to be here before you know it. It will be. It'll be a blink of an eye. The Blitz will be uh, in the rearview mirror, and we'll be look, looking at training camp. In the meantime, we'll be previewing it here on the Blitz for the next. Next month for Kyle, I'm Bill. We'll see you again next week.